<laughs> Hi, this is Stu, and I'm here, of course, at the lovely Purple Valley. And this time I'm here with John Scott again, and it's just you know such a great pleasure to be here with you and have a chance to talk to you again. And um, the first thing I wanted to ask you, of course, and I know this is a pet subject of yours, and something that I find difficulty in identifying with, so that's sort of interest for me too, is the, the moon and how it affects our practice. And because f for myself, I'm a lot of the time unaware of what the moon is doing. I mean, I do f have days where I f I've got lots of energy and days where I haven't, and I adjust my practice accordingly but I'm not always aware as to what the moon phase is, but I know there's some people that are really, really tuned into it. And so can you help enlighten me and any others uh, are a little bit in the dark like me? Well, first, Stu, thank you for inviting me back <laughs> <laughs> to, to Purple Valley interviews. Yes. <laughs> um, this being our segment, it's a privilege to be here and it's just fun right. being with you anyway. Thank you. Um, and of course, Purple Valley is a great venue. Yeah. For me, Purple Valley is one of the spaces, places where I watch the moon. I'm very lucky to teach at some beautiful retreats. And another one is in um, uh, Salento, southern Italy. Yeah. And the skies are perfect for moon watching. And it's because here also, because it's not a city and because you have access to the sky more easily or the clarity of the, the moon itself? I think it's because there isn't the clouds Right. The weather. <laughs> it's more about the weather. Um, so first I'll ask you, Stu, where is the moon right now? Um, it's gone. <laughs> it's daytime. <laughs> or what the phase yeah. is it in? I know it's like about half moon. Good. So yeah. you know it's half moon, you know it's gone, it's daytime. Well, of course it's daytime, you said. Uh, and obviously our associations are moon at night, sun at day that's okay okay but it doesn't stay exactly like that there is often seeing the moon in the sky during the daytime i've seen it yes the sort of before sunset where you see both sometimes yes so we will be mm. seeing the moon tonight or this afternoon sorry around about probably two if not three o'clock as early as that yeah it's going to be slightly more than a half moon and it'll be following it'll appear to follow the sun in its sunset yeah. So, so if we were to point for the yes. moon, <laughs> for it would be it down. It would be down there <laughs> somewhere because it's going to be coming up in the east. It, okay. will, it will appear to come up in the east. Because for me, it's just like, it's like, well, it's up there <laughs> in the sky. Yeah. And and then sometimes you go looking for it, and it's not there. It's sort of right. over so, there somewhere. So here at here at Purple Valley, I'm facing the Shala. Right. So um, Shavasana House is behind me. So to my left is east, to my right is west. So I'm already oriented on the planet. I know exactly so where I know, am. Yes. Okay, so, and the sun is traveling that way. So that must be south. South, yes. So this must be north. north. Okay, so the orientation here is that if you really want to look for the moon, you just need to know what time of the phase you said the moon's at. So it's, it's at a, just past its half moon phase, it will be a rising in the east, but because the sun will be midday, one o'clock, two o'clock, it is so bright. So let's first look at the sun and, and make that daytime. We're on a big sphere, ball, yes. spinning in an anti-clockwise direction, which is easterly at a pr apparently a thousand miles an hour. With a slight yeah. tilt to it. And so as we turn anti-clockwise, it appears that the sun arises in the east and sets in the west. But we're turning to daytime, looking at the center of our solar system. So our face is facing the center of the solar system during daytime. As we turn away, still turning anti-clockwise, at sunset, where our shoulders just passing the sun, and then we start looking to the outer reaches of our solar system. Right. So during the daytime, like say you are the sun, you're so bright, I can't see anything around you other than you and our atmosphere. So yes. I can't see the, the constellations behind you, the stars behind you. If we turned you out, then yes, I would. So it's a little bit like the stunned rabbit thing uh, driving apart. Yeah, in the headlights. And the headlights. Mm. So if the moon is close to you, very close to you, can't see it. 
so let's go straight to full moon. Full moon's going to be opposite the sun, isn't it? Yep. So if we make me Earth, and I'm looking at you, at the sun, it's full midday for me. Yeah. Okay, but let's say the moon's going to come up. I'm going to be, have to be facing over to the east as it's rising, because it's going to be completely opposite. Yeah. And every full moon is a potential lunar eclipse. Okay, so how does that work? Because, uh, yes, we're all sort of tuned in with a solar eclipse. Yeah, mm. which is the op opposite. Yeah. So let's do the solar eclipse because we're tuned into the solar eclipse. <laughs> the solar eclipse is, is, for me, posture, free breathing, looking place from okay. Katabi Joy. So Guruji's yeah. postural thing, if I sit to the side to the camera, if I sit like this, yes. then let's say my head is the sun. If my head is the sun, it's shining down here. This is sort of like being in the past, maybe doubt, maybe worry, negative reflectivity, reverie. Yeah. My heart's behind the light. Okay, and you can almost see, oh, I've had too many uh, Kingfisher Ultra last night. The weight is bearing down on you. Okay. Then the opposite is if I sit like this, it's a bit like the English stew. <laughs> <laughs> With the nose up here, this is sort of, a, this is the opposite. We could say this is a little bit like loser. Yeah. The system's against me. Yeah. Okay, there's nothing in it for me. Where this is, uh, what's in it for me? What am I going to achieve being the top of the class? A little bit too perky. A little bit too much. Mm. This is no effort. Mm. This is fully tomatic out of balance. This is t becoming rajasic, getting some more life and fire in there. And this would be overly rajasic. This is too much effort. Effort? Effortless. Yep. Or this is the yin, and this would be the yang. Okay, so I also agree with the, I disagree with the yin yoga th title it's just a title and a brand and very good commercial for selling but yes. you cannot have a yin practice unless you're completely bolstered up which we might as well do on our moon day on our moon practice right. do a yin practice yes definitely on moon day on dark moon day be out there bolstering whether you're male or female be restoring yourself you've got plenty of earth supporting you yeah. and then you're relaxing into the posture if you're doing a a two-dimensional pose where you're standing upright then postures are a relationship through your breath to gravity and you have to be active you have to be active. you need mm. bandha mm. so you need bandha and bandha let's say is the subtle energy that actually does have a phys physical relationship and you're needing a toning in your body and so you need to actually work so there is working in involved us. but you've got to find the balance the balance between between let's say rajas and tamas yeah. so if we get the balance between rajas and tamas what do we get the sattva the illumined quality yes. so let's say this is like future past uh, loser winner or selfish gain okay and where's our middle ground and so but here if you put this heart right in the limelight okay you can almost read through personal posture which people do minds Mm -hmm. where the mind is here and where the mind is here so I've digressed <laughs> we were talking many times I imagine because <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the solar eclipse yes Hatha yoga Hatha yoga is the balance between sun moon energies to get into the Shushumana the pulsar the center star this is let's say the Hatha Yoga is out of balance here, isn't it? Yeah. There's no sun, moon, uh, everything's collapsed. All those lovely channels are uh, squashed. And then over here, maybe I'm going to burst them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Guruji was talking about the Nadis. And when he described it to me, he didn't describe them as beautiful flowers. You know, an arrangement of <laughs> these, these lotus flowers up the center line or the core of your body. Yes. He described them as knots as blockages and so the paradox is you do a Marichyasana D 
tie your physical body into a knot to untie the knots. Yeah, so it's almost like by tying it, it knows then how to release. Well, as you bend and flex the structural body, as you yes. know, Stu, you are also bending and flexing the energy body. Yeah. Okay, so the Chikitsa series is all about arms and legs supporting the spine. It's all structural. And the most structural pose of uh, primary series is downward dog. Four limbs supporting the spine. Yes. And so we're getting to the gateways of the armpits and the, and the hips. That's where I come up with the terms armpit bunda and groin bunda. Right. Because you've got to get understanding those before you get to those flowers in the center. Yeah. yeah, which then elbows, elbows and knees, no locking elbows. If you lock elbows, lock knees, there's no flow between earth through those. You lose the connection. You lose you? the connection, the water elements shut off, it either gets trapped up here or trapped down there, and of course it's going to cause pain and suffering in the yeah. body. So I would call them a bandha as well, or let's call them chakras. Right. Because we know that there <laughs> is many in the Indian system, mama, they call them mama, mama points. points. Yeah. A whole network, and I always like to joke too, because in Guruji's anatomy, the only once did he ever say to me about the skeleton. Uh, and he yeah. said to me that after 1,000 repetitions of chikitsa, or three years of chikitsa, my body would be structurally lined left and right, spine. Without any particular emphasis on one thing or the other. Do all of the postures of yeah. the Chikitsa series. So for, I then translate Chikitsa as structure, mm. that my skeletal structure is aligned. In aligning my skeletal structure, I'm also doing uh, ligament, tendons, muscles, Everything okay, so veins, so nervous system. Obviously, we've got to get into the nervous system. So let's say these armpits and limbs are about getting into the nervous system eventually. But we don't get into that until Nadi Shodana. Second yeah. series. So if, let's say first series is all about structure and um, the, learning anatomical terms like flexion, yeah. extension, okay, rotation, side flexion, medial, lateral, and it becomes a whole combination of all that. Mm. And most of the primary series postures and standing postures are all either geometric shapes or anatomical names, one or two dedications to a few sages yes and then there's only the turtle going back to the womb baby yeah uh, there is a, a rooster in there um, and then there's a, a bridge all the rest are anatomical name like Janushasasana yeah Pashimottanasana yeah they're all uh, relating to the body where in the second series you get into animals yes in a big way into a big way mm. so primary series is taking you really back to into the womb to start all over again. And then of course the first seat that we really arrive in as a baby is Bhada Konasana. So you do take half a series to go back to the beginning and then you start from Bhada Konasana, the practice. For me, Bhada Konasana, oh yeah. Mm. And then Seti is the bridge into those second series postures. But interestingly enough, those second series postures are very much going back to baby lying on the ground. All that shalabhasana, that's all baby stuff. Yeah. That's another interview, Stu. <laughs> I've digressed. We've got a whole series of 20 interviews coming up. <laughs> so anyway, I Getting haven't... back to the moon. I haven't eclipsed <laughs> yet. <laughs> the eclipse, Stu. So the eclipse is when the sun and the moon and earth are in a special alignment. Three celestial bodies all aligned center to center. Yeah. So, because of my design background and my playfulness, the reason why I wanted to go back to Bhattu and back into the womb, is before we can do second series, we need to learn how to move like a child, not like an adult. Because to, to a lot of people, it seems the opposite. You need to be like full power to be able to get into the second now, series. No, you've got to go so. back to learning and understanding how to move like a child. Once you move like a child, then you can be a peacock. Right. Then you can be a frog. So you can play? You can play. You can play with your body. That's so primary series, Chuck, it's a bit like the first set of Lego you get. Just basic building blocks. Yes. And, the, and Nadi showed on it is when your parents can afford the more expensive <laughs> second sets where you can start making things with glass windows and wheels <laughs> and yeah, it all changes. So Hatha Yoga <laughs> is the balancing on the sun-moon energies. Yes. And so 
obviously agree with me, Stu. <laughs> obviously, if you don't know the phases of the moon, where it is, then you don't know whether your right nostrils block or your left nostrils block them when they're switching and swapping. Yeah. Most of us are not aware of where they are. I know that my right nostril tends to be slightly more blocked than my left. Mm. I, f I know when it's clearing and I know when they both are pretty much flowing fairly evenly, which is special. And that's when I'm teaching in class. Is that when you, you get the, more, the most clarity? Well, when you're balancing out the mm. sun and moon energies, which mm. is the duality. It's another representation of, of this dual dark light, yeah. the, 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 the good, the evil. The, however you want to wrap it and package it up, they have to be balanced to get into that shashumna, to get into that, that central uh, quantum midline that we have. Yeah. So we have to build, build a relationship with our, our sun-moon energies, our, let's just say male-female. So part of my femaleness is in my presentation with my hair. Yeah, you know. there's a, a lot of glamour going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about you know uh, balancing out, the, honouring the, the, the having the ability to have empathetic relationships with my students, to be able to have that sense of emotional feeling and, and understanding yeah. that, it's, that, that the teaching is not all about power and, and driving and achievement. And that's, I know we, we, we just take a little digression there, but one of the, because I'm always asking for feedback when people come to see me and I say, you know, how's the course going and this, that and the other. And um, I'm always getting from your students that they feel that, yes, you make a definite connection with them and that you understand what they're going through and that there isn't any forcefulness to you. To you. You know that you yeah. really, really, you really play back, and obviously that's something you foster, but it also must come very naturally out of you as well. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll stay with the digression for a little moment. I believe that teachers yeah. are born, not cultivated. Not cultivated. Teachers yeah. are. You're either going to be a teacher or not a teacher, and you're born. So you're born from your mother, but you're also born from the mat. Right. Whatever the discipline is, you have to have had the 99% the practice that, cause that's continuing. Yeah. You've got to have the experience. But you know, there are people that uh, have the ability to, to hold an audience or to be able to have patience, to be able to explain, to repeat again, to, to be patient. Mm. Uh, being, having been a father um, and a husband, I've had gone through that real f household phase, which is a, a really important phase of understanding as well. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll go there, but let's finish the yes the eclipsing. <laughs> 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 we'll go there because I have to go back to Guruji. Yes, indeed. Because because Guruji, in a sense, my mum's my first teacher, my dad's my second teacher. I've had a number of teachers, but Guruji is my real teacher in terms of being born from Guruji as a as a teacher. Right. I'm born from my mum, yep. and you can see the growth to become a teacher. I knew I wanted to teach something at a particular time. I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but I didn't know what the subject matter was. It was going to be being a seeker. Yeah. Uh, ah. yes. um, so anyway, but I've also been born as a teacher through the experience of, of practicing with Guruji. Yeah. So we'll vis let's him. visit that in a minute then. Yeah. So, to finish off, we recap negative, yes, positive. positive, this is loser, this is winner, this is nothing in it for me, this is all the negative thoughts, doubt, blah, 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 blah. Here is co overcompensating it. We could be in the past or the future and we're oscillating like that all the time, never in the present moment. So, being Libran, I understand <laughs> what it's like hanging out here. Right. If my scales are tipped, if I'm depressed, I'm depressed. And do you swing? You feel you do yeah, swing like that? Yeah, of course I like swing. That? I swing, and then of course I'm here, and I'm feeling, yeah, I'm I'm winning today. Top of the world. I'm on top of the world. <laughs> okay, but they are all selfish. Right. Both. They're ways. all personal. Mm. It's all about me, Stu. Mm. It's all about me depressed, or it's all about me winning. Okay, and in my younger days, when I was a warrior... We can still see that in you now. <laughs> yeah. There is a warrior I had underneath. to fight to be on top, Stu. 
You know, so the younger teachers coming through yes. have gone from the athletic phase of their brahmacharya. Yeah. Okay, so in, in, in Indian system it's brahmacharya, you're a student. In Carl Jung, his archetypes is athlete. I remember being the athlete. Really competing against myself, handstands, you know. And then when I became a teacher, I had to stay on top of my game stew. Yeah. To, and do all that work. Yeah, I even that you put on yourself as yeah. well. Being a husband and a, and a, and a <coughs> father, I had I'm now a household to provide for. Mm. And so you have to stay, you, you, that's the warrior phase mm. that uh, Carl Jung comes Now I'm entering what he would call the statesman's phase or the vanaprastha, which is where you go more into meditation. You go, you're not so involved in the community politics. Yep. You might be an advisor, like a statesperson. So now I'm in that role of teaching other teachers to do that warrior stage. So I'm not having to... <laughs> I can sit back now a you little can bit sit more. sit back a little bit. <laughs> and now what happens when you sit back a little bit, but not, not too, too far, far is you come to an eclipse. So here, my earth is my pelvis. Right. So exhalation is that rooting down there. Now we know it's something like 93,000 million miles away, the sun. So if I just think of the huge distance between the head sun, pelvis earth, the moment that you exhale down, there's your mula, and you inhale up, there's your udi. So mula is downward contractive rooting. Udi Anabanda basically is upward and flying, expansive, yeah. lifting up. That distance is huge. Just have a look to my thoracic. If I let that distance collapse backwards, my thoracic moves back. Yeah. If I stretch that up, keep it stretched, but then continue to take it that way, my thoracic goes forward. So if I just keep that vertical, just this straight, straight up, the thoracic comes in line. What's in the middle of the thoracic? Your heart. This is heavy heart stew. <laughs> we is, don't want that. This is gravity's really pulling us down. Aging is going to die really quick. This is then the heart is way out the front there. This we could say this is just an imbalance of the parasympathetic nervous system, and this is the sympathetic nervous system on fire. You know, mm. you can't stop. You keep going. Boom. But some people would say that this sort of is also open-heartedness maybe yeah, but this back's like closed though yeah it's true this yeah. might be pretentious I, i'm open-hearted to you because i'm going to get a lot out of it uh, okay it still falls into the category i'm going to self-gain right you know so you've got to watch out for that charming someone yes okay we can charm one another when we're charming one another what does it mean that there's an end gain, isn't there? So, yes. So sometimes we've got to watch out for the fox, the wolf. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I started to play with it. <laughs> play with sorry. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got the wrong beads. <laughs> yes, I was trying to tell him that she should have had interview beads, not his normal beads. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is a little bit, so this is my mala, a, a secondary, secondary interlude here, uh, or sorry, digression. Akam, Dwe. Trini, Chatwari. Okay, so um, just as some yes, yoga masters, teachers might be counting their mala while they're talking, I've got my mala <laughs> up here. But so you can only ever count to five. We've been up to nine. <laughs> we have been up to Suri Namaskar, eh, Stu? Ah. Anyway, so if my heart comes perfectly aligned between my earth, pelvis, yes. head, sun, heart, moon, now, viewed from Earth, looking up to head sun, with the heart moon perfectly aligned, what happens? An eclipse. Yes. It's called a nimbus. A halo or a radiance of light behind the moon. Because yep. the moon has blocked the sun. So I looked up eclipse in the Oxford Dictionary, and what I get is, is to block and to surpass. To block and to surpass is to eclipse. Yeah. So what does that mean to me? To block the light of the sun and to eclipse the sun, it actually even makes a more spectacular 
a celestial this wonderment mm. also on the way in and the way out a little digression within the digression <laughs> Harry Potter's yes broomstick was called a Nimbus 2000 his first one uh, so you think it's reference not the to a cloud there's a cloud called a Nimbus yeah? isn't there? no it, was, Nimbus it, it, it eclipsed all other broomsticks yeah it was also the one that was against the dark arts, blocked the power of the dark arts, and it was the fastest. That's so, what you get when you've got children. You gain all this. <laughs> so a nimbus or a radiance or a halo of light. Yeah. And so our, our wordplay in our head, I've, my head's full of wordplays. So what my eclipsing does is A, it blocks the negativity, yeah, the egocentricness. So I want to block thoughts of that. Can you see that? You can. Yep. You can actually see my thoughts. So a lack of posture means all of the energies here, Stu. Yeah. As we get to a certain an aligned posture, then it's this is the center not this anymore this is our heart mind not our head thinking yes your heart mind this is where there's inspired revelation or whatever you want to call it and so here in this eclipse place you're then those word associations where have you heard the word halo who has a halo jesus <laughs> You okay. got there before me. <laughs> okay. Or St. Anthony. Yes. Or any of the Christian saints all have a halo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary. So does the Buddha have a halo. So, but if you love symbology and you go into it and look at it a little bit more, have a look at Jesus. Jesus' heart is usually open. There's radiance of light coming out mm -hmm. of his heart. A red rose. So there's a light and a rose. It's not a lotus, but okay. It's a flower. That's a flower. Yeah. Same symbology. So he has an emanating presence of light that's coming from his heart center plus the halo. If you look at Buddha, you'll see Buddha actually has a bigger disc around him. Yeah. And then the smaller disc. The bigger one centered around the heart. So Jesus and the Buddha, for me, for example, are exemplars of selfless ones, yes. eclipsed beings, selfish, selfish, selfless. This is a place of humility. So this is where it is, and what I mean by selfless is in that eclipse place, it's not about you, self-important you, it's about being in service. Yeah being in service to others is the secret of Hatha Yoga. And so how do we foster that? Obviously we're fostering it from how we're practicing, how we're well, we relating. Got, we got here, Stu, by you asking about the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Not just holding things as labels, unpackaging them. Just like a sutra, a sutra is stitched together and you've got to undo those threads to get unpacked mm. to get the bigger contextual meaning and so why do we have a moon day we have a moon day and then we go off and forget about it mm. do we inquire into the moon day and that's what your inquiry is it is about yes so let's tie it into the name it's called Hatha Yoga Sun and Moon what on earth is that all about um, being Westerner we have a, a um, a freedom to, I love this term, I got this term from Richard Freeman, cross-culture borrow. Mm. Or to actually borrow from different systems, not being bound to one doctrine all the time. When we open up and we go, oh, that, take that from that and that from that and that from that and see how that works. So, for example, yin and yang, yes. they don't work on their own. And when the yin and yang are together, what do you have? More of a complete... You have a Tai Chi. Mm, yes. Do we often in the West hear those three words together? Yin, yang, Tai Chi? As a result, mm. 
So a yin and a yang energy make a Tai Chi. Mm. That Tai Chi is the equivalent to Sattva. Rajas, Tamas, that's a trinity. Mm. Rajas, Tamas and Sattva. So here the Sattva is the eclipsed state the illumined state, the awake state, when the shashumna is flowing because the energies of, of solar and lunar are equal. And so I'll take you into the next question hmm. of... of <laughs> that I didn't even know I was asking. No, you did ask it <laughs> about that teaching aspect and the, and the care for others. Yes. Is that there's four Brahma something... Um, Codes of relationship, I call them, that potentially talks about if you can get these four working for you, yes. you'll get ekagra, one-pointed focus, and you'll be able to still those fluctuations of the mind. The imbalance between sun and moon, right side, left side. Let's say the sun side is all about the things, and the left side, the moon side, is all about you in relationship to those things. Yep. That's basically a simple cartoon of it. Those two nadis are like that, strangling because the two pictures aren't the same. Your, your thing triangle, stew and triangle, what you think of triangles going through your left channel, the actual tri triangle thought is actually neutral, empty, the heart sutra, gati gati paragati parasangati bodhiswaha. It's the wave is form, form is wave, you know, the wave, uh, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Our, all of the asanas are empty, but we pack them with our shit. <laughs> yeah? Yes. And our association to them, and that ties us up in the knot. Either we can't do it, yeah. or we're the best. And we're loving it. And we're loving it. And then, ping, yes, <laughs> the right. hamstring goes. Yes. Yeah? So when we start to realize the asanas are empty, then the grip on that central channel, our emotional fields will start to, to settle out, our mind will start to calm. And the one I'm talking about is, is Upekasham. Upeka is the fourth one, and which means, unfortunately, lots of teachers translate it as with disregard to. Okay. So when there's negative energy, bad energy, okay, don't go to the pub, because if you go to the pub, you're going to mix with these people and you'll lose it. Yeah. I call it the wobbly top syndrome. So We're all wobbly tops. Okay. When two wobbly tops hit one another, it's a train crash. Take Guruji, he was a spinning top who was spinning on his center at high revolutions, a higher state of consciousness, higher vibrations, low vibrations, lower ascent rotation, a wobbly top. Yep. When a wobbly top meets a true spinning top, their th vibrations are increased. It's like whipping the top yes. to keep the top going. You've got to keep whipping it. You've got to keep practicing 99%. Keep practicing, keep it going, keep your vibrations up. If you aren't strong enough to go down to the pub and have the illumined effect, then don't go to the pub. Mm. It's about equanimity. It's being able to hold, well, that person is, is me. I am them. But you've got free will and choice and... Well, we are of one. <laughs> <laughs> They're another part of me. Right. And we're denying another part of ourselves. Okay. But how do you get to that place of equanimity? Again, being a father, hmm. like when your daughter's going out with a guy, say, five months younger, Whatever, I won't paint the picture. <laughs> <laughs> There's people cringing already. What person has ever had their parents agree to the person that they are in relationship with? Mm. It's not the chosen one. There's no equanimity. They can't see the love that's there. Yeah. They can't see the bigger picture. Anyway, so one of the things about receiving your students, I learned that from Guruji. When I first arrived in Mysore, having been directed there by my first teacher, Derek Island, I knocked on Guruji's door in the afternoon. He came to the door 
and it was a big beaming smile. There was no lines on his face, it was an open face and he, he, I think he say, where are you from or something, where you come from? Yeah. And he welcomed me in with love and kindness. Right from the word go? Right from the word go. I can add a little digression, Derek went to Mysore, bef be, um, I learned from Derek first before he went to Mysore. He was n had left the Shivananda organization, had never been given a spiritual name, wouldn't take it, right. wouldn't hug, wouldn't pr put his hands in namaste, wouldn't do alms, anything like that. It was just all out body beautiful, physical, although he had some real depth inside. But he, he, he wasn't going into dogma and doctrine. Yes. There was no way he was going to call anyone Guruji. The response that Guruji had on him was when he knocked on the door and Guruji came to the door, the first thing he said was, Hello, Guruji. <laughs> <laughs> so Derek's not here to tell that story now, but that, that, yeah. uh, that, that's the effect that he the had. The energy that was coming through. And so what that is is Maitri. So the four are Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka. And there's a sutra that says if you can get all those working for you, then you'll be able to, to, to still the fluctuations of your mind because your mind won't be having all these relational problems. Yeah. Quite simply is that when you welcome your students in, you welcome them in, even if the studio is full, you say yes, because the second one, which is Karuna, which is compassion, you're welcoming them all in with their stuff. You're accepting them as they are, understanding that they are human, of human condition, and we are in suffering. Right. We've arrived, unfortunately, to an unlightened society. I get that one from Gretchen. A lovely title. When we're born, the, 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 the world is unenlightened. Hmm. If we were being born into an enlightened society, that would be different. So we, we, we were born into the virus stew already. There's, we're in so conditioned existence mm -hmm. right from the very mm -hmm. beginning. So there's the, there's the culture, there's the education, there's the politics, there's the religion of that place that you arrive, that you choose to, to come yes. through at. And that's the, that, that, that becomes the story we take on. That becomes the identity that we take on and that then becomes misidentified. That's who we are. And so we've, we've lost the real um, selfless self that illumined in a spiritual being. We're in human condition. So understanding that, you welcome everybody in. But there's a difference between bringing people in and making that direct connection with them and for them to, to get your energy and also to accept you in. Well, to Guruji, there, Guruji, to Guruji's Pratihara was mm. uh, sense control, but his Pratihara also was seeing God in everyone and everything. Right. So he's meeting God. He's taking a quantum leap, Stu. Mm. He's in his quantum midline when he's in that place, making a quantum leap, accepting the God in. Yep. Yes, there might be some bags that the God's carrying, but we'll see if we can sort through those bags. Mm. We'll wash them, mm. clean it all out a little bit. Because you have to have karuna. Karuna is compassion. But what it was, was it's not just having empathy and being able to cry with someone and, 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 and feeling their suffering. Yep. It's having a burning desire, Stu, to help them. Mm. But not you doing it for them by having some simple techniques that you can pass on to them for them to do the work. Mm. That's what Guruji was giving us, mind control. And there's, there's something about the teachers that were with him in those early days that seems to have, have lasted through time and, and the students sense that authenticity, don't they? And yeah. if you think of the people that were there with you at that same sort of time, they're, they're lasting teachers, aren't they? And they're attracting students all the time and they're, they're drawn to something that's coming from that time. That's what I'm feeling. Is that how you see yeah, it? Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to say. I had my mum, 
Yeah. Lots of teachers. I have my mum, my dad, and Guruji. Yeah. They are my first teachers. They are who you learn from. They set up the basic pattern, so one to five, really important stage. So let's say one to five when I was 27 with Guruji, so 27 to, to 32. Those first five years with Guruji yes. were really important. On my first year with Guruji, I went twice. I went for three months and came back for four. On the first three months with Guruji, on the last month, there was only four of us in the room. Wow. So I had Guruji adjusting me in everything. And every pose that he gave me, he adjusted me in. So I had the one-to-one. -one. Yeah. So that's my precedence, Stu. My precedence is that my teacher treated me this way. That way. And so when I first started teaching, I didn't teach more than eight people. We yeah. had a studio called The Space at Number Eight. It was Number Eight Chapel Street. Right. It was perfect. Nice little infinity sign. Yes. Space at Number Eight. We only had eight students in the room at a time. Because no. I was trying to, to um, copy my guru. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing with The Matrix. Is I don't know whether you saw the, the, the part in The Matrix where Neo takes the book open and puts the money in. On the book it's called Simu Simulation Simulacra. Right. And, and You're taking some details when you watch something. Keenow Reeves had to <laughs> read that book because it was about, the, um, about making maps. And uh, Richard Dream once again says a really beautiful thing is that you, you know, the, the map of yoga, you can't put it in your pocket, fold it up and put it in your pocket. The map of yoga really is your experience. Yeah. You've, got, you've got to do it. And it's uh, not always about sort of copying the way a teacher taught, is it? It's, and just trying to re-emulate them, but you, you're drawing the essence out of it, but you can still apply your own... Yeah, I'm not talking about copy, I'm, I'm not doing like a photocopy copy. No, exactly. It's, not a f it's, it's like really observing Guruji. Uh, when I mentioned about going back to child, that's another part of what I bring into workshops, is what I call the back to basic baby or fundamental foundations and openings. I have a baby sequence that I give pre sun salutes. Right. Guruji never lost his fundamental foundations and openings. When he was 90, he could still sit down on the floor, stand up off the floor, and if you looked at him in a caricature of a cartoon, mm. he looked like a big baby. Right. He didn't lose how to move like a baby. That playfulness and that... Yeah, yeah. and so, but like, but, but like the Dalai Lamas often refer to his childlike manner. Hmm. So Guruji had that welcoming you in with love, kindness, and the childlike openness. He had a technique to give you so that you could pull yourself out of your suffering. And that's what Karuna is about. That's what yeah. compassion's really about. And, and it wasn't one thing for everybody, was it? it from what I oh, he pushed it, buttons. It's very much he pushed yeah. everyone's buttons. Yeah. He called Derek Old Tree. <laughs> yeah. Um, he said that man speaks too much, talks too much. That was me. I was to just in the shower. Yeah, yeah. I was too. Yeah. Were you, you asking, mouth closed? You were asking questions. No, no, no. No, he was fine for it. No, but yeah. I think just generally speaking. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, from Maitri, Karuna, you then have Mudita. Now, as a parent, think about this. How many pregnancies, how many conceptions are welcomed? That's a sad thought there. Yeah. I just could see that <laughs> thought. <laughs> I, so I read your thought then, <laughs> that there's a lot of unwanted yeah. pregnancies yeah. that do continue full term and the child's born, and what lives have they got mm. ahead of them. It's sad to think about it. Even when the family's full, even when the money's not there, mm. still welcome the baby in with love and kindness. Mm. The baby's going to fall over, the baby's going to hurt themselves, but you guide your child and you give them technique strategies to be able to start becoming independent. Mm. That's the role of a teacher, isn't it? I mean, of a parent-teacher. Yeah. 
to give them their so you know that they're going to hurt themselves, but you're not going to smack them from falling over, which some kids do. Mm. They get smacked from falling over. Mm. If they hurt themselves, they get scolded rather than... Okay? Yes. So, let's go for a little bit further into there. You've got this, this um, compassion, giving them technique, and it flows into mudita, which is called sympathetic joy. We must have sympathetic joy. What does that mean, sympathetic joy? I then look at it, what does it mean to me? So when I'm doing these little studies and inquiries, I go, well, what does that mean to me? What does it feel to me? How can I unpack that in a John way? <laughs> and so I then look at Guruji again. And Guruji expressed uh, Maitri, Karuna, how did he express sympathetic joy? Mm. He would grunt, say bad man, <laughs> he would, he would, he never really gave praise. And do you think that was, de that was a deliberate, he had to hold himself back or? He would say good bad man. <laughs> right, good bad man, yeah. <laughs> you could see he would smile, you could see that he was proud. Right. But let's put it into a, a more real one. The word really is, what do we really suffer? What are the, one of the poisons of our heart that Guruji talked about, six poisons in your heart? One of them is jealousy. Right. So sympathetic joy, the opposite to sympathetic joy is jealousy and envy. If you're plagued with jealousy and envy, you won't be able to do mudita. Mm. You won't be able to experience Sympathetic joy, being joyful for someone else's success. Yes. To be joyful for someone else's happiness. That's mudita. Yeah. So, for example, Eddie was working, Eddie Stern was mm. working on uh, the translation of Guruji's Yoga Mala to get that into English. At the same time that John Scott was doing his, uh, with uh, Gaia Publishers, um, uh, Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, uh, a definitive step-by-step -step guide to, to yoga. Right. So, I've written a book. Well, that was only written through the publisher. The publisher, this is how it works in the Western world of materialism. There's the Frankfurt Book Fair. Yoga's coming up in interest. Yep. And so Gaia wanted to put a presentation of a yoga book Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. They had done the earlier one of Shivananda Yoga, that beautiful little book of yoga, Shivananda. Gaya was the... And so Ashtanga's coming up. They secretly wanted the words power yoga. Are you kidding? That came later. <laughs> that was a whole, a whole debate. I put my pens down. Anyway, so they were looking for an a, a English practitioner to be a first-time author, which the editor basically was going to do the writing. Right, okay. And I turned it down, turned it down many times, um, and finally the editor came to class and said, each time I've approached you, you've turned this down. He said, but every avenue I get down, because it has to be an English practice, you're, you're the most advanced You're the person. one to come to. Yeah. yeah. And I said, well, I, I can't do it, I don't have enough experience. And he said, well, if you don't do it, if this is the final no, then we'll just get someone else to do it. At that point, I then felt responsible. Yeah. So I said, well, I said, Jonathan, if I can call Guruji, let me call Guruji first and I'll put it to him. And if he says yes, then we'll go for it. If he says no, then I won't. So I called Guruji. I called Guruji and he's John Scott Guruji goes, oh, yes, 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 what news? He always said, what news? <laughs> yeah, why are you calling? Well, that what news was him also taking an interest in you. Yeah. Whenever you saw Guruji, the matri, the welcome you in, welcome you in with all your stuff and say, what news? Yeah. He was, that was his way of asking, how are you? What, tell me something about you. He was interested. Yeah. Uh, so, what news? <laughs> I said, Guruji, I've been approached by a publisher to write a... A uh, book on Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. Book! <laughs> His voice went up a, a few notes. You! <laughs> you write book! <laughs> and I went, yes, Guruji. Um, 
I, and so I explained what yeah. I explained, and he said, hmm. And so he said, yes, you write the book. So I wrote the book. When, that's a whole other story, but writing the book, Lucy was very much part, um, my first editor writer with me. Yeah. We would send the stuff off to Jonathan. He would come back and he would have changed it and say, and this gives you benefits like a good sleep at night. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> my graphic skills superseded the, 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 the graphic designer that they had. I ended up studying the page layouts. We t managed to take over the writing and uh, they got more than they bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the point is, here it is that John Scott has a book and a DVD. Yep. And I was there also with Guruji when they had played the DVD. And there he is, the ability to still be mudita, sympathetic joy, to have joy for someone else's success. Because yeah. remember, Guruji is the one that says nobody owns Ashtanga Vinyasa, yeah. nobody owns yoga. And so here, here he's had many of his students do well, but we're his children's Jew. Mm. We're his Western extended family. Of course, he's proud of his 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 um, students' efforts and sharing of the practice. Yeah. And of course, the contemporary. I mean, before Guruji died, he had a website. Yeah. So it's coming that into yeah. the twenty first yeah. century. Yes. You know, he he. You know, whether he did the website or not. No, of course not. He had someone else doing the website. Yeah. Um, so, it's like now, just talking to Dina, who's here for this week, Dina Kingsburg is here this, <laughs> week, this week. We might be able to get to talk to Dina, which would be great. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, anyway, her son, um, uh, Jake, um, is it Jakey? Jack? Jakey? Um, he, he, he's saying, Mum, we've got to get you on Instagram and stuff like that. And, and she's saying, no, you know, We're a different generation. Yeah. Of that generation, I remember Guruji saying to Eddie Stern, no advertising. Yeah. For, for yoga is about the heart and coming through from the heart. Um, but I appreciate that we need to do things like this, this because we aren't um, accessible in terms of sharing intimately. One on one. One on, yeah. yeah. And so, so I, I go with the, I'm having to put the, the cap on <laughs> here. So, so Guruji displayed to me um, how it was to be um, encouraging with your work, your progress, and your successes, yeah. and to be really pleased for them. And so I'm also in that situation too, Stu, where I've got other now graduate trainees From doing your, their things, yes, doing coming, the, and, yeah. and, and experiencing the same thing. Yeah. And the last thing I want to do is fall out with anybody, let alone fall out with Guruji. Yeah. Or fall out with now my student teachers, yeah. because that's so unyoga, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. And so that's where, from from sympathetic joy, we're able to flow into. Well, let's say before that, the difficulty with a, with with being a parent is your child wants to play football instead of do yoga. But then you're happy for them. You're happy for them because yeah. it's their their yeah. gift. Their gift is that. Or the other way is, you are going to be a ballerina. Mm. You are going to play the piano. You're going to do all the things I didn't get to do. You know, yeah. so Mudita gets really out of balance. And, and, and how mums and dads are with their children, and there's the competition, there's the envy, there's the jealousies, all of that. And, you know, no wonder we've got psychotherapists and sociologists that are all working through the stuff, yeah. the human condition. Yeah. Because these haven't been taught or impl implemented early enough. And so if we start to understand that, although I'm doing this linear again, Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, it's all at the same time. Everything's going on at once. It's all, yeah, but let's learn them in order. And then of course it's Upeka, which is equanimity. Mm. By this stage, you're saying, well, the, the equanimous thing is the football or the yoga. Um, you can see they are the same. Mm. And it's just another aspect of you experiencing something else. So consciousness in the big play of life is, is 
playing many characters, mm. many characters. And and if we sort of circle round back to the moon for a sec, you know, like the we said that the moon is going through all these different phases, and we can also associate that with our life going through several different phases as well. And in your own practice, it's obviously went because it's gone through those early years, and then a period where you were like teaching full on and also a householder, like you mentioned. And do you see now that you're entering a, a different phase? And, and what is that meaning for you as you're coming, coming yes, to I that Yes, I would phase? say that in life I would be in the waning phase of the my... <laughs> the waning moon phase. I've been through my fall. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you don't feel like that energetically, though, do you? Because when people look at you, they just see this energy zooming yes, up Yes, but your you. other question that's in the line up there, Stu, yeah. is, uh, is, uh, is my body in pain? Yeah. Well, yes, of course. Yeah, from this amount of, you know, rigorous uh, physical endeavour, as, yeah. as long yeah. with other stuff, yeah. too. Well, let's look at the phase of the moon. This full moon, yes. the dark moon, we saw that the, the, the dark moon for me is a special time because that's when yeah. the, the, those three are aligned and such that the earth blocks, I mean, sorry, the, the moon, yeah. moon blocks the light of the sun. Mm. And so if I'm earth, you're the sun, then the moon's here. And so on the waning phase, it's coming down. Um, <coughs> sorry, on the waning phase, it's coming this way. It's up there on the, on when we're seeing it from Purple Valley and it's getting so close to the sun we can just see a tiny little fingernail before we go into practice it's beautiful and then it passes the the sun that's and it, on the passing is the dark moon day and then there's the new moon and the new moon is then on the setting sun in the evening yeah and then that gets built up and build, builds up builds up so we could say that there is a rhythm to the practice, that dark moon would be, let's say, the end and the beginning. That would start, mark the end of a cycle and the beginning of a cycle. And so f really, we operate by the solar calendar, not the lunar calendar. Dina's now arriving on half moon. Right. So she's arriving at quite a good time. Her, her two weeks are going to go chum up to full moon yeah so the energy will be growing plus you add christmas in there the whole psyche, psychological energy is shifting. just building to mm. that full moon and then there will be a a, 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 a decline after that full moon mm. also if you add christmas in there and the celebratory nature of christmas the food and all that we can see that coming up the christmas is going to be a lot easier and flowing after Christmas is going to be, yeah, it's going to be, the energy is going to be <coughs> down. Yeah. So, and, and if we relate that now to your own expanded lifestyle or lo yeah. longevity of practice, longevity of, of being, uh, of teaching and, and giving, you know, so as a, as a role as a teacher, there's a lot of giving too and that is continuing yeah. on do you feel now that okay you've got more time for your your own practice yes. Yes. now that you've yes. you've relinquished some other yes stuff yes so <coughs> from being a brahmachari a student an athlete i was able to in the worst case scenario i practiced twice a day in the early days, in my early and that's, that was, I've heard that, yeah. that a lot of people did that yeah. in those days. Oh yeah, I used to do a whole primary with Derek in the morning and then a second in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. Um, and apparently Guruji did teach two practices a day, but he changed. Right. Maybe because of his workload. Yeah. When I got married and had children, my practice went Phew! So it was... As a brahmachari, it's your right to study and it not be considered selfish. Right. And I was very luck lucky that I got a good nine years in before I became a dad. I was already starting the fourth series before I became a dad. Yeah. 
At the point I became a dad, no more postures. Guruji didn't give me any more postures. We were here with our babies, but we were here just to get a practice because at home, everything had to go into maintenance. Yes. So I've, I've been on, let's say, a 20 year maintenance cycle where I've ebbed and flowed within that 20 years. So India's now 21 and, and Finn's 18 and a half. I am at the end of that real hands-on period that, that a parent has to do. Yep. They are really forging on with their lives and all of a sudden I've got more time. During the household phase, it, the, the family's first. Work is first. Uh, John and his practice is down, there, down but there, but I can't do that without having that. So I had to have a maintenance practice. I had to be able to 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 keep keep in. going. But also, I needed the practice to to continue being brahmachari. Brahmachari doesn't stop; it flows into the growth uh, the growth of the household phase. I'm still learning, yeah. and I still had mm, so much to internalize from working with Guruji through that intense period, and continued with Guruji. Yeah. But th this. This, there was so much unpacking unpack, it and, and coming into it, but being a teacher, taking that role on, meant that I was revisiting, revisiting, or to use the word, recounting. Yes. I was recounting all the time the practice. Yeah. And so uh, my own practice then, even though I was on maintenance, matured. So the, the depth, the depth to which you view things and the understanding behind it was, yeah. was broadening. Yeah. And so now, so you've had that phase as such, how far into this new phase are you and what does it, what does it draw up for you? What, are you? what are you seeking from this new phase, if you are seeking something from it? What I'm seeking from this new phase would be to maintain optimum physical health. Okay. Having a mum that's passed this year with Parkinson's, seeing seeing this soul trapped in a body, mm. um, then just looking wide spectrum, seeing it's inevitable we are getting older. It's inevitable that the body, as a machine, is wearing out, and in some cases breaks down, and in some cases actually it gets diseased. Yeah. Um, so it's inevitable I'm going to die. I don't want to die uh, in, in, in physical suffering. Yeah. So I want to, to be able to use my practice as, a, uh, as, as the tool that it is for both body, breath and mind health. If I can keep my body fit and healthy then I'll have the energy to, to be able to work longer, so my longevity yeah. as a teacher. If I keep my body, then my breath's going to, to still be healthy, which then means my ability to balance my mind out. Yeah. Will, will have some clarity in my mind, keep my mind alive and active. And does it, because I know as I'm getting older, my, my physical drive to, to do things diminishes shall we say I, I could put much more energy th into things or much more focus even maybe i think you know when i was younger than i than i do now i but maybe it's just that i'm more accepting now than i was then whereas when you're young you sort of just forge forward but are you, do you have that sort of feeling? Do you need more motivation now or is it you, you, you just like a Duracell self-motivation? <laughs> it would be really easy just to sit, Stu. Yeah, you're right. But because I'm still doing physical work, yes. I still have to keep myself strong. Yeah. So when Guruji said 10 years, third series, so 10 years of study, third years, I mean, advanced practitioner yeah. to be a teacher. Yeah. Your body needs to be strong. Because, yes, not only you need to keep up that level yeah. of quality of practice, but also the, all the adjusting and everything yeah. takes a heavy toll on that, the body, doesn't that's it? That's a practice in itself. Yeah. Being the support, the structure, 
the male dancer to the or the, the mm. Shiva to the Shakti energy. Mm. You know, so the student is the sh is, is the Shakti. The student is the energy in f moving into form. Yeah. And so then the, the teacher is the one that's the, the light that's illuming that, seeing that, but at the same time, before standing back and seeing it, is the scaffolding. You know, setting up the scaffolding for that that creation to then be self-supported. Yeah. Um, my own pr practice is, is part of being human is being able to move in this body. We're separate to, like a plant that's rooted. We, we can we can repot ourselves everywhere, <laughs> wherever you want. Um, and I look at I look at horses, for example, and I see a horse running in the wild. And you go, that's being hoarseness. Yeah. Seeing a dog, seeing a dog being fit and healthy, being dogness. What is it to be humanness? And I look around and see a lot of fat, sick, yes, injured, heavy bodies. Not necessarily heavy not in, in their bodies. Heavy in weight, but also and heavy into the yeah. earth. Yes, and I go, mm. what has happened to this species? Mm. We're a species. Mm. So then I look at our dogs and go, okay, that dog is too domesticated. Mm. So we get too domesticated. We have things doing things for ourselves. We lose our relationship to earth and gravity. Mm. And so you and I are both sitting here like two young men. We're sitting nice and tall. Mm. Well, better than two young men. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've got a few years on me yet, and I've still got a cult. I haven't even started with this yet, so that's but, coming. Yeah, but here we are. We're able to, we're, we're, we're sitting healthily yeah. because we have a physical discipline. Yeah. And so it's that realization that if I don't get up in the morning to practice, I've practiced this morning, Stu, Saturday morning. Mm. I took Friday morning off. Yesterday, the last day of the retreat, we just went to the beach and celebrated. Yeah. We had a nice, well done, pat one another on the back celebration. It was good. With the chests out? <laughs> yeah. Or with the chests neutral? On? <laughs> as neutral as we can. <laughs> and so this morning, because my body is in pain, Stu, yeah. I, I, I need to do my practice. And that's good for other people to hear because, you know, we sometimes put teachers on a pedestal and say that they must, they're, they're sort of perfect, it must be so nice to be in their bodies, everything looks so easy, and, but, and I found the same, you know, on the, I've been lucky enough now to massage, you know, lots of the top teachers, and their bodies are basically the same as ours, they're not, over, you know, excessively strong or excessively so much more space here, so much more space there, There's, they seem very, very similar, yet, so two questions are coming out of this. What is it, A, that you feel is that difference between being able to excel physically in the body that we have, considering maybe that they are actually very similar, um, and, and B, you know, um, what is it that you are... Um, I've lost my mind. Let me just answer A. <laughs> answer A. There was a B. <laughs> answer A. Because I probably won't answer the question. You won't answer it anyway. No, exactly. You know, talk about the moon. <laughs> Sorry, Stu. Um, what I want to say is yeah. that in that carrying on from that, we are human. We are yeah. a species. We are we, but the, the thing, the human condition all of that psycho psychological stuff, all that trauma that we have. Is and coming with us onto the map. Yeah, so yeah. I also want to say that my body, let's differentiate. Yes, I have pain in my body. Right now, no pain. No. The pain that's in my body is due to, uh, it's manifesting through my work. Right. So I've got pain in my back, hip, psoas, from all the lifting that I'm doing. This is but with adjusting and that Adjusting, yeah. So, yeah. So not my the practice, not the personal practice. So my personal practice is not injuring me. No. But I'm not going to blame either the practice 
or the teaching and adjusting of the practice yeah. as the cause of the injury. No. I want to make that clear. Yeah. Even if I uh, have a student that's in pain and let's say they've, they've misunderstood how the body works in the anatomy and they've hurt their knee, yes. I'm not going to necessarily blame the practice for that knee. Yeah. It happened in practice that it came up. Yeah. Let's say the karmic seeds are going off. I hurt in my body purely and simply because of the stuff that I have not yet dealt with or processed yet. Right. Or I'm in the process of going through. Yeah. So in the last two years, I have separated from Lucy and divorced from Lucy. Um, I've lost a mother. My mother died this year. Mm. Um, my kids are on the stage of going into their lives. I'm, I'm managing two houses. I live with my daughter and a boyfriend. I'm in and out of the house. I don't have a secure house. Yeah. I have money issues and family responsibilities all going on at the same time. Yeah. And I'm carrying it all on my back. Right. And then it manifests itself it, on the mat. It manifests or, on the mat or, or in my work. Mm. Um, and so uh, what it is, 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 is that each day that we stand on that mat and practice, we meet ourselves. Mm. And we need to rem remind ourselves like an explorer here for the first time again. What am I going to discover today about myself? Mm. Not seeing the goal of getting that sharper leg in the triangle yeah. or the handstand or the, the deeper back bend holding my knees. Yeah. If we go in with that intention, then it's a material gain. Yeah. We need to set our intention at the beginning that I'm here processing my life. Yeah. I'm here to process my life to find out really what I am misidentifying with. I'm identifying with all the wrong stuff the way that I didn't have Mudita or Upekasham when I was looking at the way my mum died or going through divorce or or how the bank account is. Yeah. Paying taxes. I you know <laughs> we all I that. want to swear at the tax man, <laughs> you know, the amount of money that the tax man <laughs> takes and how much I have to pay in tax. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone in Norway has no sympathy for you because their tax is like up here yeah. somewhere. So, so you know, we we all have stuff, Stu. Yeah. And if we if we keep pushing it down, it'll just come later. Yeah. So but we're we're not thinking because also we want to be focused in the practice, don't we? So it's not like a time to like go on a daydream about all your shit in the in the practice either. But as you say, it's about more subtly explore, exploration, is, am, I, am I right along those lines? Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. When we go into that practice and if we use the techniques that Guruji gave us, first sutra I would say is yoga's mind control, second sutra is breathing system, third sutra is counted method, fourth sutra is tristana, the fifth sutra is vinyasa. Mm. Vinyasa is that Tristana, that trifocus of um, the counted choreograph, breath movement with conscious awareness that brings you into a neutrality, mm. into that neutral eclipsed place. When I get there through my techniques, Stu, I'm 36, mm. not 58. No. So when I actually get in the zone, I'm timeless because Prana doesn't know yesterday, tomorrow. Prana only knows now. Prana doesn't know um, five years of age, 95 years of age. Prana doesn't know the difference between forward bend and back bend. Yet we'll put a preference mm. or an aversion to one or the, to other. One or the other. Yeah, And we'll then load up the preference of back bending to the aversion of forward bending, or it might just be the complete opposite. Yeah. But the both of them are exactly the same. It's just like strawberry or chocolate. We're going to have an experience, not getting caught up with having the choice, yeah. getting stuck with the choice. Go for the experience, and if it's the wrong thing, just give it your all anyway. 
Carolina came up with a question for me to ask you, and this is like complete change of topic. She said, ask John about the fact that he can't sing and that Sting had to teach him how to, to sing. Is that a, a true story or folk legend? He, tr he said to me one day after I'd given him such a difficult time about breathing. Right. He said to me, come on, John, I'll teach you how to om. And that was, uh, it's a, a beautiful memory. It was in, uh, I think, uh, it was either the lake house or Tuscany. One of the showers was a steam shower. Right. With double-sized shower, two seats, steam jet in the middle. So there we go, Sting and John go in, sit naked opposite one another, and we... <laughs> learn to om. Learn to om. So first of all, he said, you, you om, and I did my John om, <laughs> and then Sting came in on top of that, and it was like, I, d I, just, I just stopped, <laughs> and just went, wow, Sting. And he said, imagine your cranium like a vault. Imagine your, your cranium like a vault, and almost being like that dome that you see in the stars, and find the place where your voice re resonates. And so we started oming again, and he'd always come, come in, come in. And it was like we were in an orchestra. It was amazing. Crazy. Absolutely beautiful. So since then, um, I've accepted this is what my voice sounds like. Yes. You can, you can hear by my gravelly, groany yeah. talk, you so can imagine what mine would be like. <laughs> what, what, what I realise is not to try and be some other singer. Yeah. The moment I try and do some other singing, then it's not going to work. No. I have to, f I have to come from where it is and accept it as it is, and when I really accept it as it is without judging it, then of course it will open. It opens up. So sometimes in the class when we're doing some good chanting, people have come to me afterwards and said, "Really loved that chanting." <laughs> I go, "Oh my god, <laughs> really?" <laughs> <laughs> because you're being true to yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, and not being inhibited. Yeah, and letting it be free. Yeah, and and my guru used to say, "No singing." He just used to say, "Chanting, not singing." Yes, and it was sort of more of a monotone. But yeah. there was definitely a, 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 a rhythm or a beat a to it. Yeah, or yeah, a, yeah. yeah two beats bit. to one beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, we could do one, shall we? We can do one. Go on then. Which you one, mean yeah. I'm joining in too? Yeah. Which one should we do? You lead, and I'll uh, groan. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody at home, whether you're on the bus or on the train or standing in the airport, you have to join in too. Okay. I'll give you the one that uh, quite a few will, will, will remember this one. It's Punamadah Punamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamidaya Purnamivav Ashishate. What it means to me is the metaphor of Guruji's Yoga Mala. Yeah. Every bead is to be counted and meditated on. Every posture is like a bead. Every vinyasa is like a bead to be counted and meditated on. The posture itself, if I did have a Christmas red bead there, would, yes. be, the, would be the, pl the flower or the pose. And that's also to be meditated on. Every posture has a beginning, a life, and an end. Birth, life, death. We all then come into this world, Stu, and we ask, who am I, what am I, where am I? So those questions, where am I? Where did I come from? What am I? What am I doing? Where am I going next? That's vinyasa. Mm. We're sitting in ashto. Mm. Mm. We're sitting in ashto lotus padmas padmasana. We have come from samastidhi zero. The next vinyasa will be nava, going back up to samastidhi. So it tells you where you are. It's like a point of reference, a GPS. Mm. So for me, the bigger answer to all of that: Where am I? Where am I going? Right here now, Stu, we are surrounded in love. We come from infinite love. We are one of the many 
individual representations of that infinite love. What are we doing? Being love in action. Hmm. And where are we going? Back to infinite love. Nice. Oh. Purnamadach, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamadachate, Purnasya, Purnamidaya, Purnamivavashishyate, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you, Stu. Thanks, John. I think that's a good way. Ah. We can do the other thing later. Yeah, we'll leave it there. And, yeah. and, you know, that's a good point to stop. And, you know, just, you know, a million thank yous for giving your time up to, to come. And I know this is like part of your little holiday now. And yes, so, I am. So we're extra blessed that you managed to find the time. And thank you, Stu. Well, I look forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Can I book in for a massage? You can. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I need you to. Actually, Stu's been working on my psoas. Um, when we start the retreats, it's, it's really lovely. We have a, a, a staff meeting and a welcome meeting. And Stu's part of the extended staff here at Purple Valley. And uh, when Stu, along with other therapists that are here, introduce himself, Stu says, I'm the fix-it man. <laughs> so I'm sitting next to the fix-it man and, I, and he has uh, done some wonderful releases to my psoas uh, up around my neck. Could you work around my neck again? <laughs> so, you can have whatever you want. So before, <laughs> this sounds terrible, but before Dina's group fully book you out, yeah, could I yeah, get a, for sure. a spot from you? Of course. Thank cool. you very, very Thanks much. So much <laughs> Cheers. Take care.